Welcome, I'm Art Weimler, and today we are going to explore the mysteries and science of breath, from its rise in Egypt to its fall in 1919. With these simple tools, we will transform the gifts of the earth into art. In 1919 came the invention of the planetary mixer. This made bread with no substance. As you can see, this is just dough and air. I mean, there's just nothing to it. You don't want to eat this. We need to get back to basics. We need to make a good, simple, hearty bread. Our main ingredient is wheat. Wheat is an amazing substance. Within it are all the necessary building blocks to create great bread. The properties were first discovered in Egypt. The first breads were unleavened, but one day the dough was left out too long and it formed bubbles, creating a softer, more palatable creation. As bread popularity grew, so did the export of wheat to Europe. In Greece and Rome, bread became what it is today. The Greeks invented better ovens, and the Romans better milling processes. Water is the next ingredient. It is essential in the creation of great bread. It activates the enzymes that are already present in the heart of the wheat kernel. Glutenin and gliadin, within these two proteins, activate to form the substance gluten. Gluten is a factor that makes or breaks a great loaf of bread. Yeast are the real workers in the art of bread making. Yeast is a fungus, just like this mushroom. Yeast also gives bread its distinctive flavor, texture, and aroma. Salt is our yeast regulator. Salt is a fungicide, which means it kills yeast. It also stops the enzyme that breaks down the gluten, which allows for longer fermentation time without loss of shape. But most importantly, salt is a flavor enhancer. It coaxes out the sweet wheat flavor of great bread. Volume measurement is the first fault of many would-be bakers. It is far too inaccurate in the science of bread. The mere percentage difference of any of these key ingredients will completely change the outcome. Today we're using 335 grams of flour, 225 grams of water, 8 grams of salt, and 4 grams of yeast. This will make two 280 gram loaves, or two 10 ounce loaves for you US watchers. We can hydrate our dough just a little bit with our fingers, just gently taking it around. Start squeezing. Now the actual kneading that most people are used to is based on the movement of a planetary mixer. I don't like to move like a machine and I think it's a really inefficient way to use manpower. So what we're going to do is just hydrating our dough. You'll see, because we did all that measuring to begin with, it's perfect just about every time. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to make this dough and just stretch it a little bit and get it to work. Get that gluten working. The dough will become less sticky and you'll see this as I go. Just like the actions of a cat. Your fingers stretch out. As you pull, your fingers close. Now this is done. This is hydrated. So what I'm going to do now is going to take this and set this out on the surface. Go and clean our bowl out. We want to make sure to scrape that really good. In bowl, we're going to add a capful of oil. You don't have to measure it. Then just take and take coat the wall. Gluten net stretched out. Just going to pat our dough out into roughly a rectangle and then fold it into thirds one way and then turn it and fold it into thirds again, just like so. Okay? Then take it into a ball. It's nice and rest for 45 minutes. Now our dough has risen a little bit, as you can see. I'm just going to take and press that out into roughly a rectangle. Take the side, fold it into the center, rotate it, fold it again. This is going to line up our gluten. So just one, two, three. Okay. Now you can see, I've got that nice gluten net on the surface of the ball. So that's done. We're going to let that rest for another 45 minutes. And then we're going to shape and bake. has more than double in size, so we're just going to take and press that into a rough rectangle. Take our scraper, cut it in half. It doesn't have to be exact. I mean, this is your house. We're going to take and fold it up. We're just going to take and we're going to seal that. Okay, that is going to give us nice spiral bubbles. Okay, so our loaves have rested. We're going to take and actually form them into what we're going to bake. So we're just going to take and cut that down the center, fold that in thirds, and then over again, sealing it. We're going to make sure everything's nice and even. We're going to take our hands and put them together, 
Just give it a quick roll, bring it down to the end. Okay, one more time just so you can see it. Pat our dough, fold it into thirds. Okay, just like that. Remember, seam side down. We're just going to lay that out in our couche. Now, to make sure our bread only rises up, I'm just going to put a little fold of cloth there. If you've made your dough ride, it won't stick. It requires very little flour. And all you have to do to keep it out of the air is take and fold that over the top. Take our loaves and be very gentle. Place them onto our screen. Then we're simply going to take a safety razor and score. And we're going to do this at a 45 degree angle. Okay? After that's done, we're going to mist it with a little bit of water. This is going to allow the skin of the bread to stretch out during the baking process. We're going to want to take and shut off the convection bite. Place this in our oven. Okay, as you can see our bread's done. We've got good caramelization on the surface. And now we're just going to take and we're going to set it down right here. And give it a quick mist of oil. This is going to protect our crust. Also because the crust is about 300 degrees, it's going to fry it a little bit. It's going to look nice and shiny. A good presentation will make it great. I'll tell you that you need a big, expensive, fancy oven to get store-bought bread. That's just not true. This is a $50 convection oven that you'd find in most college dorms. Thanks for watching today. I also want to thank Woody and Jovanina for sharing their beautiful new kitchen. I teach at South Seattle Community College. You can come and take a course, and I'll walk through this whole process with you. Thank you very much. Ha, 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 ha.